Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to see a great game. This is Putian Kasparov 1976. As a curiosity, you should know that Kasparov was only 13 years old in the moment he played this game. Let's start. Uh, D4, Knight F6, C4, G6. Of course, he's going to play here one of his favorite defenses, King's Indian. Knight C3, Bishop G7, E4, D6, and here White plays uh, this Simish scam. It's very interesting, very strong, one of the best things White can play against King's Indian defense. And here, Black has some options. Um, they can play with uh, knight c6 or knight d7, and they can break over e5 or maybe over c5. They can also play in the queen side with a6 and b5, or maybe just play with b6. So they have some different possibilities to develop and continue improving the position for black here. In this game, as you know, he played knight c6, bishop e3, and a6, queen d2, rook b8, preparing some things over here, and then rook b1. Finally, he castle b4, and now he broke in the center with e5. White played d5, and now an interesting move, what he, Kasparov played here. Knight d4. Apparently, he's sacrificing a pawn here, but you're going to see that it's not really a sacrifice. White played knight ge2 here, but let's see what could happen after bishop takes and queen takes pawn. This is not a good line for white because black could play in this position a very strong sacrifice on e4 is going to be winning for black after queen takes then black can take here on c3 or they can just play rook e8 and this is decisive advantage for black in this position So taking the pawn is not a good idea, and that's why in this position Putian just played knight e2. And Kasparov continued with c5, d takes, and b takes. He's going to sacrifice the pawn. Now it will be a real sacrifice here on, on d4, because now white can't take it. And of course black will have some compensation, because when we look at white position, uh, we will see a bishop here on develop, and white king is still in the center. So, obviously, black has some compensation for the pawn down. The next move for black, rook e8, and white just developed the bishop and played bishop e2. And here, a very interesting move for black. c5 is a starting sacrificing, looking for more activity for black pieces. There is something important here. This knight on c3 is protecting the rook on b1 and also is protecting the pawn here on e4. That means that in some lines uh, the queen can check and take here because the, the knight could be on b1 if black wants. So let's see what happened. Uh, b takes c5 and then knight takes e4. Pawn takes knight, of course. Uh, white cannot take with a knight because of the rook. It will be hanging here. And after this move, it's threatening white queen. So they have to take the knight with the pawn. And now queen h4. Putian played here g3, 
but it seems like the best move for white here was bishop f2. Then black should take on c3, white would take the queen, rook takes rook, and then bishop takes queen, and we would have this endgame. It seems like it would be an equal position here. It seems like that was the best line for for white in this position after queen h4. In that game, uh, white just played g3, which is not the best, and here Kasparov took on b1. The idea is to be able to take here on e4 with the queen after knight takes, then queen e4 and white is threatening h1, b1 and d4 at the same time. So this looks very good for black. That's why in this game Budian didn't took the rook and played something interesting. He played king f2. Uh, this looks good because now black, I mean white, is threatening the queen and the rook at the same time. So in this position, Kasparov found another great move. He moved the rook to b2, but now threatening white queen here. The idea is to deflect the queen. If queen takes the rook, then the bishop on d4 will be hanging and it will be check. Pawn takes queen and rook takes queen on d2. Bishop takes bishop, king takes bishop, and now we have this endgame. It seems like black has the exchange up here, but after the next move, king e3, this black rook will have to move somewhere, and then this pawn on d6 will be unprotected. That means that white can take it, and then white will have like two pawns for the exchange. So they will have enough compensation because this pawn will be at sixth rank, and also mm, it will be very well protected. And this one will also be a passed pawn. So in this position, Kasparov played rook c2, and after king d3, he decided to give back the exchange to turn this position into a good endgame for black. So let's see. Uh, rook takes knight, king takes rook, and then pawn takes pawn. And let's see what do we have here. This is an endgame, the material is uh, even, but when we look at the pieces, we will notice that black pieces are much better. L look at this rook here on e8 is on a half open file attacking this pawn on e4 and when we look at white rook is on h1 it's not very well located and the same happens with the bishops this bishop is, is much better than the bishop on e2 Obs observe that this bishop is uh, hitting uh, white pawns which is not good for the bishop. So black pieces are better and also black structure is much better. Look at these pawns, they are good, they are protecting each other. And look at these pawns, this is an isolated pawn, it's an, an open file, and this one are also isolated and double pawns. So the pawn structure is much better for black too. So what we have here is an endgame with some really good possibilities for black. That's why Kasparov decided to give back the exchange and, and play this endgame. Bla uh, white played bishop d3 and then black played bishop b7, attacking the isolated pawn here on e4. White played rook e1 and the next move for black, maybe you would like to try to find it. The move Kasparov played here was rook e5. 
the problem with a normal move like f5 is that white can't advance so this move is very strong because it's fixing the weakness so it cannot move and that's why I like this game so much because after all the sacrifices and complications we saw in the opening and middle game Kasparov didn't get any material advantage he just got a good end game and now he will have to show his strategic uh, skills to win this end game and a move like this rook e5 is showing that how good he is he was also in this kind of positions so um, now black is threatening f5 and also is threatening something like rook h5 which is also a strong threat a4 and now f5 rook b1 bishop takes and rook b6 of course white is going to try to get something in the queen side but the problem will be this f pawn that is a passed pawn and it will advance very fast f4 rook takes a6 f3 and bishop f1 black was threatening bishop takes and f2 winning the game so bishop f1 and bishop f5 is threatening rook e1 very strong rook a7 king a6 and now king d2 stopping the idea of rook e1 but then f2 again threatening rook e1 now bishop e2 is stopping that move but now we have a deflection very nice move bishop g4 trying to deflect this bishop so they can promote and also threatening e2 so white needs to do something about this and is bishop d3 but now rook e1 again threatening f1 also threatening rook d1 and rook takes bishop maybe so white played here rook f7 but now we have another good move for black maybe you would like to try to find it so I'm gonna make a pause the move Kasparov played here is an interception I'm talking about bishop f5 at the same time we are intercepting and also trying to deflect so it's also a deflection here a5 and here of course white I mean black is winning they can promote directly and get a piece but this is even better bishop takes the idea is that after rook takes pawn the only winning move for black will be rook f1 but it will be enough it will be very easy to win this endgame and that's why in this position Putian resigned it. Before I finish, three important moments in this game. In the opening, in this position, Kasparov played knight d4. Since the beginning, he was looking for the initiative. It seems like a sacrifice, but we already saw that white cannot really take here on d4. Some moves later, in the middle game, we had this position and Kasparov continued with his ideas of looking for the initiative and play aggressively in his, in his games so he played here c5 the idea was that after b takes he could play another sacrifice this time it would be given a minor piece knight takes e4 after this white would have to play very accurately to get an equal position and finally in the end game Kasparov played another important move he played here rook e5 is blocking the e4 weakness and there is another important concept we need to know um, 
we need to put pressure in our opponents weaknesses but also we need to make sure those weaknesses cannot move because maybe they won't be a weakness anymore so that's the, the idea and the concept behind this move rook e5 so thank you for watching this video if you want that I make more videos like this one analyzing masters games give me likes so I can know it and I will try to find and comment some more games like this one and that's it thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon in another video